Okay, I wanted to share with you what was a big learning curve and a big financial mistake in getting started with solar. I built this frame here to hold 12 solar panels. I bought four kits from Harbor Freight. Each kit had three panels in it. Each kit of three panels produced 45 watts. One kit was 45 watts, four kits gave me 180 watts. So this 13 foot long solar panel mount here that I built would allow me to generate 180 watts of power an hour. Now why is that a mistake? It's not a mistake. I actually, you know, that's what I wanted until I realized really how much power I needed and how much power I needed to generate and to store. And that's when I looked at these panels here. These are 220 watt panels each. So one panel by itself would replace all of the 12 panels combined that I bought from Harbor Freight. The four panels here will allow me to generate 880 watts of power in the same footprint versus 180 watts of power. One panel here that will generate 220 watts of power cost me about $435 from Costco. One set of panels that will generate 45 watts cost me almost $200 at Harbor Freight. So the Harbor Freight panels per watt are double the price. And if I wanted to generate 880 watts of power, I would have to spend thousands and thousands of dollars on Harbor Freight panels and have a huge array in order to get the same amount of power I'm getting out of four panels here. So that was a big mistake for me. Generally speaking, I do not recommend the Harbor Freight panels because they work out to be about four dollars a watt. These larger panels that I bought at Costco and I'll have a link down below uh, where you can buy them at Home Depot and also on Amazon so you can get the best price. But these panels here only cost about two dollars a watt. So half the price of Harbor Freight. Now I figured I'd start with Harbor Freight because it was only two hundred dollars for three panels. Well two hundred dollars may sound less than four hundred and thirty five dollars but in reality it was substantially more because I had to buy so many more panels to generate the same amount of power that I needed. So that was my first mistake and that was almost a thousand, oh that was about eight, an eight hundred dollar mistake. The second mistake was the charge controller. I knew that I wanted to get as much power as I could from the panels so I wanted to get an MPPT charge controller. I'll have another video specifically on different charge controllers. And so I looked around, spent a lot of time looking at charge controllers, and I went to eBay and decided to buy a MPP charge controller off of eBay. So I spent the, about $100 on eBay and bought the charge controller, got it home, tested it, and it was not performing anywhere near what the specs said it would. I then went through an approximately six month process to get my money back from eBay. Now, depending on the seller, they can really, really make life miserable for you to try to get a refund. Anyway, finally, they did concede because I did prove to them on video that it was not an MPP charge controller even though they said it was. I'm going to show you the charge controller that I bought that is a fake MPP charge controller. So let's take a look online and see what I don't recommend to buy and what I do recommend to buy and how you may be able to save yourself a lot of time, money, and pain. So here is the Harbor Freight 45 watt solar panel kit and it was a mistake for me I bought four of these my rule of thumb would be these could work for you if you don't want to generate more than 225 watts a day if you need to be able to run more than a light bulb for four hours or uh, cook more than a couple pieces of toast or what if you want to use your laptop for more than a couple hours or watch TV this is not going to be enough for you the rule of thumb is you can take however many watts your, your solar panels will generate, multiply it times five hours, and that'll give you how many total watts that your system will 
make. In that case, we're looking at 225 watts. So if we go back to my favorite website for resources, and that is the backwoodsolar.com, and we take a look at how many watts per day on average something uses, then we can kind of figure out how many watts we need to generate. For example, our toaster run for six minutes a day will take up 120 watts. So if you make a couple of pieces of toast, you've just used up half of your power that you've generated from your Harbor Freight solar panel. If you wanted to vacuum your house, you could vacuum as long as you could get it done in about 15 minutes. Then all the power that you generated in five hours would be used up. So I found very quickly that it was gonna be way too expensive for me to be spending a couple hundred dollars or less, you know, these go on sale, but uh, on an average, say $180, $190 worth tax and everything, and it's just gonna be way too expensive to do that. So that's where I should have figured out how much power I wanted to generate before I bought these kits. I figured, well, it's only a couple hundred bucks. That's a cheap way to get into solar. Well, in reality, this is probably the most expensive way to get into solar because it's so expensive per watt. So what I came across were these Grape Solar brand solar panels. And if you notice, this is a, a 280 watt panel and it sells for $448. That works out to be about $1.60 per watt, not over $4 a watt. Also, this one panel is about the same size as two of these panels, so it takes up a lot less room. Much more efficient, costs a lot less, so going with a polycrystalline or a monocrystalline solar panel is far less expensive, takes up considerably less room, and produces significantly more power than the Harbor Freight panels will. This one panel here will generate 280 watts versus those three panels that'll generate 45 watts. So in a day with a 280 watt mono or polycrystalline panel, you could generate 1400 watts instead of 225 watts. You'll need to get some cabling and some other things, but you'll find very quickly that this is a lot more affordable way of doing it. Now, some people want to make their own panels, and that's fine. I just don't want to be soldering all these little cells together and have one bad connection and it not work and then have to build my own frame and just all that hassle. I didn't want to do that. Now, there is one advantage with the Harbor Freight panels, and that is that they're smaller per panel. So they're lighter weight, easier to move around. But you give up a lot of power creation ability by going with the smaller panels. That was my first big mistake. That was about an $800 mistake. My second big mistake was going to eBay to find an MPPT controller. So I spent about $100 here on eBay, trusting that all the information in here is correct, and it's not. This is a fake MPPT controller. This is a standard controller, a very, very poor controller. It costs about $100, and it is not anything near what it's advertised. So that was my second mistake, was buying anything for my solar panels off of uh, eBay. If you are gonna order online charge controllers or solar panels, I'd encourage you to do it on Amazon versus eBay. That's just my personal experience. Another option would simply be to go over to Home Depot and buy them at Home Depot. Then you save the cost of shipping. Shipping can be very expensive. So here's the grape solar panel. It's a monocrystalline, high quality. These are very well made. This is this manufacturer that I bought at Costco. $400 to generate 250 watts. Very affordable. There's no shipping. You pay a local tax and you take it home and you're good to go. You could also buy the SunForce 30 amp digital charge controller at Home Depot. This is a good unit, even though it's not an MPPT controller. Uh, if you don't want to spend the extra money for an MPPT controller to get the extra 30% of power, then you can go with the SunForce. This is more than ample to handle one or two of these grape solar panels. So in order to avoid the $1,000 mistake I made, be very careful in what you buy as far as solar panels, where you buy them, and what kind of controllers you buy, and where you buy them. I'd encourage you to stay with Amazon or Home Depot for a local source. Again, I will have all these links below this video. Please check them out for the best pricing that I have found 
for solar panels and controllers. Also make sure you check out backwoodssolar.com. Again, I'll have a link below and look at their free article on determining how many watts you'll need a day for the appliances you want to run. Of course, the first thing people think about when getting a solar panel system are the solar panels. I think I've discussed this enough in this video. If you stay with a monocrystalline or polycrystalline solar panel, you should be fine. The next important thing is a charge controller. There are a lot of charge controllers out there. My next video is gonna be on the charge controller that I purchased, why I purchased it, and why I purchased it even though it's not a name brand charge controller. Probably one you've never even heard of. So stay tuned for the next video on selecting a charge controller for your solar panels. This is LDS Prepper reminding you, if you are prepared, you shall not fear. And hopefully if you watch my DIY solar panel system video series, you'll be able to save time, money, and frustration with a great system that meets your needs.